and we're live. Hello, everyone. Kevin, great to have you here, guys. Always a pleasure to be here. We are talking to Kevin Kelly today, a good friend of mine, known the guy for years. He is the founder of Big Buzz uh, Agency, great agency with phenomenal clients. And we were talking uh, last week and said, you know, we should chat about how do you sell? How do you market in this crazy, crazy world? So I'm glad you're here. How you been? How you doing, man? All right. You know, same, same place <laughs> as always, but yeah, so great to see you. I should um, mention that I should mention that Kevin is a Corona survivor yeah. and that, and that you were one of the first people I knew you're the first person I knew in my world to, to get coronavirus and you both, you and your wife got it. Um, we always like to be first. Huh? We always like to be first. You like to be first, right? But you got through it and you survived it and you're out on the other side, which is good. It wasn't, wasn't terribly scary for you, which is good, but I'm glad to know that, that, that you guys are okay. Um, so tell me how, first of all, how has it been working uh, sort of in this uh, world, in this craziness, in this chaos for someone who does marketing for a living. Yeah, it's been all over the place. We've been fortunate enough, um, you know, been a lot business as usual. You know, over the years, very being a tech forward agency, we've got a lot of things in place that allow us to be efficient working from home. So, you know, our virtual world hasn't really skipped a beat, but what we're doing for our clients really has changed. Um, you know, changed in two parts, right? The, the messaging and the medium. Um, you really have to be start from, a, I always believe this all the time, but you really need to start from a place of being helpful, right? And um, you certainly have to be authentic. Um, we, we would, Joe, you would appreciate this. I don't know if anybody's seen the Jersey Mike campaign um, with the CEO talking to the camera in these difficult times, we wanna help and they're helping um, donate a portion of their uh, proceeds to Feed America, Feeding America. I think it's great. Some people are, uh, you would appreciate this being an 80s film buff that um, it's a little like the Schooner Tuna guy on Mr. Mom, <laughs> but I, I don't know. I think, I think it's honest and authentic. And I think that's really where you need to be with your messaging right now. It's funny. I've actually been a huge fan of, of, of Jersey Mike's. They, they've sponsored many of Shank Mines there. They're, I love their, I love their subs. They have good, good stuff. Yeah. Uh, we already have a question in here, so we'll throw it, we'll throw it in a minute. But, uh, in the meantime, you know, so talk about, um, what are clients asking for? You and I were talking, you said you have a lot of RFPs currently coming in. What are, what are clients talking about? What are they asking for? Are they, are you seeing any differences in the kind of stuff that they're looking for? You know, there's, there's differences in the timing of things and how they're going to restart their marketing. A lot of people have paused. Obviously people have pulled back, um, mostly because people weren't, they're not where they were two months ago. Right. So the medium has changed tremendously. Um, right. Nobody's in, I, I drove to my mom's this weekend down the Jersey Turnpike and every billboard was either a not-for-profit announcement or, you know, uh, thanks to the frontliners and the healthcare workers, nobody's paying for outdoor because they don't think anybody's looking at it. Nobody's outdoor. So a lot has been, Hey, can you help us find a new way to reach people where they are today? Um, streaming over the top, uh, TV, really hot, right? We're all sitting home watching. So um, we're watching the commercials too. We're watching the pre-roll, you know, before we get to the funny cat video. I mean, it, it begs the question, you know, I, I imagine there's, I look at certain companies who, you know, just started a huge $10 million outdoor campaign or, you know, for instance, my, my, my personal favorite, uh, you know, in America, have you heard of an American dream? American dream is the, um, oh, the, big is the mall. giant Jersey. mall water park slash ski amusement slope. park slash ski slope they're trying to they're trying to jersey uh dubai in jersey essentially and um you know they 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 they, they just launched and i remember like three days before we all went into lockdown um i get this uh no you're hey you come to this media showing this you know this tv media show, you know media and, and reporters showing of our new water slide park this friday and i'm just like that that just doesn't seem like a good idea you know so it, it's like what what are what are you hearing? And are you getting any calls from clients who are are um, uh, sort of in that level of hell that hey we we our timing just sucks and now what do we do? You know, a lot of those folks are kind of in duck and cover mode. Um, the smart ones are reaching out, um, so we're not seeing a ton of people that you know we're not. So we really just recently got more involved in hospitality. We've been dabbling, you know, had some hospitality hospitality clients they're working with hard rock on the launch of their new reverb hotel um working with foxwoods so two casinos that have been closed for the last two months 
Um, it's, for them, it's really about how can they be helpful. Uh, Hard Rock's doing a ton of give back to the community, which is great. Um, yeah, it's it's tough for those folks that are like, hey, we're open and no one can go out. Um, no, no silver bullet for them. Um, we're doing some non-for-profit help. We're like helping organizations that connect um, local restaurants to people that want to do takeout, right? So let's help amplify that so people know. I don't know about you. I, I actually I do know about you. You you definitely are the kind of guy <laughs> that would be really conscious about. All right, where we're going to eat tonight that I could also help my hood, right? So, right. you know, called Joe's Italian Pizza's place, you know, and, and help the neighborhood. So we're doing some of that where we connect those people and raise awareness wherever we can. Um, I want to. So so uh, there's a question here. Um, Lisa has a large Facebook group and she's switching over to a membership group. Should she keep the group on Facebook or switch to a forum? I, are people still hanging? I guess she, are people still hanging out on Facebook? My thought is that people go where they can, when they can, right? I don't think now is the time to start launching your own private network off of Facebook. As much as Facebook drives me up, you know, insane, it's where people go in times of crisis. Wouldn't you agree? Oh, people are spending tons of time on social media. So I wouldn't leave Facebook. Facebook is the new television. Uh, new is not new anymore. But I mean, when people ask me, how do I reach millions of people? It was get a broadcast TV spot, which you can still do if that's the right thing for you. But Facebook is the other way to reach people and really target them. So the interesting thing is I saw a study that said, you know, more people are watching TV. The headline was more people are watching TV now that they're stuck home with the coronavirus. But the premise was more people are watching a screen. Yeah. People aren't necessarily watching television anymore. Right. Um, you know, had this been had this happened twenty years ago, I mean, TV advertising rates would have been through the roof. Right. But yeah. so, reference to time, I like to. I wrote an article and I, I never published it. I should. Have. It's um, basically this whole this whole thing is pushing us ten years into the future. Um, it's funny. We had a client last year, a healthcare client, and they're like, "We're just thinking about starting telemedicine." <laughs> Fast forward 10 years, everyone's doing telemedicine. My kid, you know, did your kid have online schooling? Because mine has a Google class. It's like, it's all, you know, pushes 10 years forward. And uh, unfortunately, along with that was the slow demise of retail. And like, you know, so fast forward that 10 years, like you're watching Umbrella Academy and you're number five who finds himself in Armageddon and there's nobody left. That's kind of where we are on retail. Um, it's interesting. Uh, you know, what we're seeing is that, is that, People tend to to jump on the bandwagon either incessantly early or, or, or inherently late. Very few people randomly get it at the right moment in time. You know, um, yeah. I remember. Uh, I mean, I think that 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 twenty years from now, when we start writing, when we start in history books and stuff like that, and the business books, one of the things is going to be that that you know everything in the world does tend to come down to luck in incredible incredible uh, amounts. I mean, if you look at um, could you imagine a better time to have an IPO than four months before this if you're Peloton? Right. Right? Yeah. You know, I mean, you look at things like that. It's just it's just incredible. Honey, I'm actually I'm on a call right now. Can you give me five more minutes? Thanks, it's honey. <laughs> yeah, it's so, funny. You know, and it's pretty crazy. It's just it's amazing how that happens. Now, the word luck, though, I always say, and it was either Oprah or Abraham Lincoln said um, that luck. It was, it was Lincoln. I'm a big believer in, in good fortune. I find the harder I work, the more of it I have. All right. Well, simply put, I, the, what the version I have is luck is the intersection of opportunity and preparation. Yep. Really, yep. Really People say, "Oh, how do you, you know, how do you get lucky all the time?" I was like, "Well, if you're prepared, you're 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 everywhere all the time, and you're ready to go." Oh, you're muted. Oh. No, I know. I'm, I'm dealing with a child who just started crying for some reason. But um, it's. <laughs> So, I'm sure you can hear. You know, work from home and it's Speaking of what, right? So that's the other thing. I think one of the biggest questions. I have is what's going to happen to the office? So Twitter just yeah. announced today that everyone could work from home for as long as they want for the rest of their employment with Twitter, wow. right? I mean, that's a pretty impressive thing, especially here that just like two or three years ago, we were at a point where, um, where uh, 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 what was her name, from, from Yahoo, uh, said no one's allowed to work from home anymore, right? So we have really gone 180 degrees from that. Uh, what do you see in terms of, you know, I, I've, I'm, I, we're bringing someone on next week um, who's the head of a very large industrial design firm. He's going to talk all about what he sees for, for offices and things like that. But what yeah. do you see along those lines? Well, talk about necessity forcing us to innovate. You know, I would get together with other agencies and we talk about what's your work at home policy. It's like, no, no, no. We're all working from home. Um, we're figuring out how to do it better and better every day. 
And I sent out a survey to my team last week asking them, um, you know, how do you feel about working from home? How do you feel about going back to the office? You know, are you excited? Do you have anxiety? Um, and how would you feel about a hybrid version uh, when we do return to the office? And I'm careful to say return to the office because some people say when you go back to work. I'm working my ass off. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, we're definitely going to have some sort of hybrid. Um, there's no way we're going to snap our fingers and like, everybody see you on Monday. You know, maybe half the team shows up on Wednesday, half the team shows up on Thursday. Um, and it's all going to depend on the data available, the vaccines and the, you know, New York City, I, it's the greatest place on earth. But you, if, if you live 45 minutes away or four minutes away, you're probably around a lot of people on the side of yeah. the train. I mean, you know, even just the premise of, of, of you know, how things like trains are going to come back to normal. I mean, you know, you're not going to be able to get social distance. On, you been, have you ever been on a New York City subway? You're just not going to get social distancing there. You're not going to get on the LIRR. You're not gonna, so the concept of reopening, I think we're going to see a lot of businesses that have found that they really haven't lost a lot of, of, of momentum or revenue or anything like that while people have been working from home. Um, I can tell you, I'm probably going to get rid of my Regis space. I don't really, other than, you know, assuming the kid can go back to the back to school. Um, I don't really see the need. You know, I have this office that, that, that I haven't, I've been to, I stopped by once to see, once a week to see if there are any checks, but uh, that's about it. You know, yeah. we have been, we have been working, I've been working harder in some cases here than I have when I was in my office. And I think my team has too. I think all of them, you know, working, they've always kind of worked all hours, but now the lines are even more blurred and, you know, you stop and hopefully you can eat a, eat a uh, meal with your family, but then most of us are heading back to the home office or on the, even, you know, on the couch, which has become our home office. Check out the question from Lisa. Where do you see yeah. events, conferences, and especially weddings where it's a guest experience that's important going to move forward? Where do you see that going? It's a great question. I have a, a friend and associate who was in trade shows and he launched his company about two years ago. He was with a big trade show company, um, wanted to do it, go on his own, gets on his own, doing fantastic about to hit 2020 is the banner year. Um, and then this happens, right? So he, again, uh, innovated. So a lot of talk about augmented reality, creating virtual spaces for brands that can then plug into a conference, right? So I don't have to spend $200,000 on my trade show booth and then do it again next year. I mean, a lot of our clients are spending six figures annually just updating. So I think it is going to go virtual. Um, honestly, I, I, I don't have a, a crystal ball I don't when we'll go physical. I don't know if we're going to lose it entirely. The trade show industry just in America itself is a $1.2 trillion industry, yeah. right? We're not going to lose that. You're not going to see Vegas go dark all of a sudden. It just can't disappear right. all of a sudden. But I do believe that we're going to see a middle of both things. So, for instance, I see that we'll be able to have, um, you know, much much like how uh, big corporations won't send all their top executives on the same airplane, right? I think we're going to see things like that where we'll still have – you're not going to lose Concrete World. I mean, Concrete World is a, is a, is a, is a $400 million Sure. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You're not going to lose Concrete World, but what you're going to get is perhaps the CEO. Not all the CEOs are going to go. Perhaps uh, half the CEOs are going to go. The other half are going to stay uh, and and do things virtually. So I think that that um, meeting planners, wedding planners, uh, facilitators, things like that should be very much aware of what they can do virtually to to promote what's already happening. So. It might be a smaller show in terms of people, but a larger show in terms of the people that are attaching virtually. You know, the first the first trade show company to say, yeah, we are creating virtual booths or virtual rooms where you'll be able to sit and holograph your clients in or holograph your clients out or whatever the case may be, will also, I think, win big. Yeah, I, I agree totally. You know, there will be CES 2022, you know, I don't know about 2021, but, you know, we're going to have a vaccine. We're going to, you know, be safer and we'll all, we may also all show up with masks. But yeah, this is not a business that. I mean, in Asia, that's not that's not uncommon. I, you know, there are masks all the time in Asia. Right. Um, Spencer has a good question. What technologies have been used to help with marketing adapting to the pandemic era? Um, you know, we've had so many technologies in place that have um, let us do our work remotely and electronically, and you know, monitor our data. We haven't seen a huge shift yet um, as far as adapting what we're doing. Um, what we've seen is cool things like new mediums like Quibi, one technology that was born out of the pandemic. Now, I, I have to believe that they were poised to be released and couldn't ramp this up. And Quibi, the short little, uh, short little uh, video. Uh, yeah, so. TV, like, yeah, I, that was like, that was, I, re I was reading about that last year. Yeah, so 10 minute episodes. It's pretty cool in that um, if you hold it vertically, 
the whole edit changes, so everything is in. So if you've got lower thirds, things like yeah. that, really cool. I watched a couple of qu quibbies actually when waiting online at Jersey Mike's to to bring it full circle. Um, but I love I love their campaign. Um, you know, in a quibby, let's go right out right out of the gate and kind of um, make our brand a not a verb, but it's a part of speech. So, um, so yeah, Spencer, sorry, I don't have a a real clear answer on you know what technologies will be born from this, but um, being a digital agency and always, you know, looking for the next great opportunity for our client partners. Um, we've been using a lot of the online platforms that let us continue work as usual. Yeah, no question about it. I think we're also going to see, you know, the, the concept that so many things that we used to take for granted having to happen don't necessarily have to happen. You know, I think that yeah. that which is a bummer. I mean, you know me, I like being on airplanes. I, I, my happy place is an airplane. And I don't know if we're going to have somebody, you know, uh, Nelson asked what about CES. He said CES in January is one of the hugest shows in the world. What do you think will happen to it? I mean, I think it's too early to tell. I think it might not happen for 2021, but I can't imagine CES is simply going away. But then again, in 1997, who would have thought that we'd never go to Comdex again? Or, or South by Southwest. I mean, South by, right. that's, the, that's when it got serious for me. I was like, oh boy, we're going to get through this, you know, be a couple couple weeks at home. And then South by got canceled. But um, they're going to do everything they can. Like to your point, it's, it's you know, billion dollar industry, trillion dollar industry. All those organizations are going to do everything they can to assure us it's safe. Um, I know the answer to this, but I'm going to ask you, and as a last question, what do you say to a client who says, you know, we just don't really think we should be spending money on marketing right now? Big mistake. Yeah. I mean, there's just straight up stats. Those who spend during um, recessions or downturns like this are the winners as you emerge. Those who duck and cover are the big losers and sometimes go all the way south and shut it down. No question. But when everyone else is being quiet, you should talk the loudest. <laughs> Kevin, how can people find you? Um, bigbuzz.com. That's our site. I'm over there, uh, at big buzz, Kevin on Instagram, Twitter, and, uh, you can always ping me on Facebook. Cool. Tomorrow you should tune in for this Kevin tomorrow. You know, everyone's been talking about how to survive a, uh, you know, Oh my God, it's like being in jail. Well, you know what? I don't necessarily agree. It's like being in jail. So I went out and found a criminal oh. and tomorrow. And it's not you're going to be not you, but tomorrow we're going to be talking to Mark Clifford who sent to serve 10 years in a federal pen for bank fraud. And so we are going to be talking about what it's really like to be in jail. 1.30 p.m. tomorrow. Don't miss it here on 20 Minutes in Lockdown. Kevin, thank you as always. Appreciate your time, man. You're a good friend. I love you. Guys, thank you for watching. Everyone, stick around next week or uh, tomorrow, rather. We're going to have uh, Mark Clifford, who's going to talk about jail. 20 Minutes in Lockdown. And by the way, 220 Minutes in Lockdown is live. Dot com is live as well. So we will talk to you guys soon. All right. Thanks, everyone.